All right, so today we're going to continue our review, kind of touch it up. Well, it's going to be, I'll spread out over today and tomorrow the last little material, but today won't take very long. Today we're going to talk about systems of equations and systems of inequalities, so things like that. Um, I don't think it'll take very long because you guys are pretty good at that. We just kind of a little quick refresher and then I'll get, let you guys work on your stuff. So here we go. Number one, why is solving anything by grabbing the worst way to solve a problem? The answer is it's unreliable, basically. Where two things cross, if you go do second calc, intersect, and all that jazz, it might just give you out some random decimal, and you don't know what that random decimal is. And any decimal, you have to round somewhat. So I don't care if you take 10 digits out. If you cut off those 10 digits, all of a sudden, it's not accurate anymore because there's an infinite number of digits after it. So decimals are always unreliable, and you want to find an algebraic way to do it if possible. So that's kind of why. All right, number two. What do the terms uh, consistent, inconsistent, independent, and dependent mean? Okay, well, what's consistent mean? There's an answer. Very good. Write it down. There's an answer. And then inconsistent would mean there's not an answer. Mm -hmm. The terms independent and dependent are strictly about the answers. So you only talk about independent and dependent if it is consistent, if there's answers consistent. Then tell me more. If there's a finite number of answers, you got one answer, you got two answers or something like that, then that's the one that happens most often, which is uh, independent. So consistent and independent. If you have something weird happen in your work where there's uh, like a five equals a five or a six equals a six or something like that, or something that's always true, then there's always answers. There's an infinite number of them. That's the case where it's dependent. So independent, finite number of answers dependent infinite number of answers essentially and that's all there is to that three when you're solving a system of inequalities when do you draw a solid line when it equals it right so if something's less than or equal to something or greater than or equal to something if i was drawing that on a graph that's when i'd have a solid line if they said something was greater than or less than not including that line then you have a dashed line there because you're not including it so that's the difference between those two when do you shade above or below a function? You shade above it when you have a, an inequality that says y is greater than something, right? Greater than or equal to, greater, higher than, so above it. And you would shade below it, uh, conversely, when y is less than something right there. So that's kind of all the rest of that. It's mm -mm. a terrible question. I did, I know, I'm criticizing myself. Number four. Where do mins and maxes occur? And by that, I mean, if you have some region that you found, and this is your extra credit, okay? I mentioned this is that section that sucked, remember that one? And uh, I said, it's not on your test, it's not going to be, but it will be on as extra credit, like I said. If you are trying to find the max or min of something that depends on X and Y, I don't know what it is, it could be anything. Then you graph the inequalities, you find the appropriate region and you shade it kind of like as illustrated right there. So you have a nice little region and the vertices are guaranteed to be some spot where the thing you're studying, whatever it is, the function has a max or a min. So let's say you found these coordinates. This was five, six or something. This was five, one, and this was um, three, three or something like that. How would you figure out which one's the max and the min? You'd pl plug them in, right? So X is three and Y is three on this point. Plug them in, what'd you get out? Six. So this one would give you out like a six. This one, if you plugged it in, five plus six would be 11. This one, if you plugged it in, you'd have five plus one, which is six. Where's the maximum? Is there a maximum? Yeah, it turns out to be 11. Is there a minimum? Well, I guess there's a tie. There's like two that are minimum. This is the lowest number, right? Six is the lowest number. So there's two minimums on this one. And that's not gonna be all over your test, of course. But I probably will give you one as extra credit, so you might want to do that. And it won't be that complicated to graph it, so don't stress out about it. All right, LGs now. Let's do that. Continue to review material from the unit. Test is Monday. You have nothing to worry about except for the review assignment, the big fat study guide. That's the only thing on your plate between now and the test. 
try to pace yourself accordingly every single day. Every time we cover something in the review, you should try to get those problems done at night and uh, fresh on your brain and you're good to go. All right, so let's continue our review today. We left off yesterday after section 2.3. We talked about, what did we talked about yesterday? We talked about just solving linear equations, maybe by graphing or by hand. We also talked about how to solve absolute value things. Again, I will give you all three equations for when something's equal for absolute value and these two when you have less than or greater than, so those will be given on the board. And then can you write things in different forms, basically, standard form, slope, intercept, and point slope. Section 2.4 is where they start to talk about solving systems of equations. Now, section 2.4 is about solving them graphically. So if you're going to solve a system of equations graphically, what do you have to do? Get y by itself. To graph anything, right, you have to have y equals something, correct? So if I ask you to solve something by graphing, you have to get y by itself, and you have to go graph them. So this first one over here on the left is a good example. This is y equals x plus 2. This one says y equals 2x. You would plug them in your calculator, correct? You do a second calc, find out where they intersect, correct? And uh, that's basically it. If they had an answer and crossed, you'd say consistent and independent. If they were the exact same line, they would cross everywhere, so it would be consistent and dependent. And if they don't cross at all, then um, there's no answer, so you say inconsistent right there. And those are those cases that could come up right there on the picture. So know your buzzwords, make sure you have these understood. Again, only tell me if it's independent or dependent if it is consistent. So I've purposely put these lower inside this paragraph right here because these two terms are only about consistent. If it's inconsistent, just say it's inconsistent and go on with your day. You don't need to tell me anything else. All right, so you got graphing to do it, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm not going to do that much on the test, though, because graphing is unreliable. So by far, what you're going to be having is stuff from section 2.5, how to solve systems of equations algebraically. Well, you have two methods, right? What are they? Substitution and elimination. Substitution, you're going to solve for one variable. It doesn't matter what it is, x, y, or if they have a different letter, solve for something. Substitute it into the other equations. If there's more than one, plug them into all of them. Clean them up, reassess, and usually you can solve for something. Plug it back up the chain, um, back substitute, and find the other letter, and then you're good to go, essentially. Elimination, if you like that one, you can take two equations and get the coefficients to be the same in front of some of the variables. So if you try to eliminate x's, for example, if you get the numbers in front of the x's to be the same, then you can add or subtract the equations in order for them to go away. And that's a great method also. So last one I want to talk about today is solving systems of inequalities. Um, whenever you think of inequalities, you think of some kind of shading going on. If there's two letters involved, x's and y's, you'll be shading an entire area. So basically, all you have to do is, let's go off script on this one. Let's say I gave you a system of inequalities. I said y is less than x plus 1, and x is greater than or equal to negative 1, and uh, y is greater than or equal to 0 or something like this. How would you go about doing this? This is the things where you're going to carefully plot them. It's going to look something like a shaded region, right? Guys, how would you graph y is less than or equal to x plus 1? How would you do this by hand? What's the y-intercept? One, what's the slope? One, yep, so you start one, there's one. You'd have a slope one, right? So you go over one, up one, and then all of a sudden you'd have this particular piece of it. Solid line, why solid line? Because it equals it, yeah, exactly. And this one I'd want to shade below, right? Okay, and then if it says x, oh, what's an x equals graph look like? That is a, x equals is straight and down. What's y equals? That's back and forth, right? So the way I remember that is, where's x equal negative 1? I would say right here, would you agree? Well, where else is x equal negative 1? Is x equal negative 1 right here? Yeah, is x equal negative 1 right here? Yeah. So this entire thing, here is where x equals negative 1. And you would want to shade this where? I want greater than or equal to negative 1. Where's x more than negative 1 to the right, correct? So, so far, I'm saying below this line to the right of this line. And y is greater than 0. So what's a graph of y equals look like? That's the horizontal, right? So that one would look like this. And if you put it all together, it has to be below this line and to the right of this line and above this one. So this one would just be in this entire region going off forever. Make sense? Okay. And sometimes, you know, like I was saying in the warm-up, if they give you a third one and you have a nice bounded region like this, where it's all just contained in one spot, then for any other function that I might ask you to find the min or max of, 
where are the minimum and maxes at? They're at the corners, right? And that's pretty much all there is to these sections. Um, we spent a long time on them, but I think you guys got the idea down, so I don't want to beat a dead horse. That's called optimization, by the way. We just talked about the mins and max values, and they always happen at the vertices. So that's all. That's all I want to cover today. Let's look at your review assignment real quick. Um, do you want to do a couple problems together, or just for freebies, or no? Yeah? Yeah, well, I agree. Why not? So get your review assignments out, and let's look at some problems. Hmm. Anything involving these concepts? Goal yesterday was to get through 15. So if you did that, congratulations, you're right on task. Yes, you may. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, all those, those are all just about systems of equations. I don't think you guys have a problem with those, but you know, in the spirit of doing everything once, we could do one of them. So in fact, that goes all the way to 26. So anything from 16 to 26 look challenging? That's a lot of problems just for this, isn't it? Will, that, will there be a lot of problems like this on the test? Yeah, I want you to have a system of equations down real well. Anything? You want one of the threes with three equations and three unknowns? There's a couple of those. Okay, there we go. Judgment call, I like that. 16, solve by graphing. Okay, so read the directions. If it says solve by graphing, I better see a graph and you better justify that you did in fact solve by graphing, hence why I put a graph there. So the two equations on 16 are y equals 3x minus 1. That's ready to go, right? The other one's not, because what's the only thing you have to do to solve by graphing? Get y by itself. So on these, a lot of people mess them up just because they have trouble getting the y by itself with negatives and stuff like that. So equation two, tell me, guys, how would you get y by itself? What would you do? Oh, that's smart. I like that. Could you add the y over? Yeah, why, why would you want to do that? Because now it's positive, right? I love that. And then at, move the x to the other side? Dang, that was smart. I like that. So here's my two equations. y equals 3x minus 1 and y equals x plus 2. So let's go ahead and get our calculators out because it says solve by graphing. So we're actually going to solve it by graphing. You can let your calculator do a lot of the work for you. Could you go grab that by hand? Yeah. Should you be able to? Yeah, but you know, if it's on the test and you're just trying to cover your butt and make sure you get it right, I would definitely go put in my calculator too. That's what your calculator is for, it is to check yourself. It is not to find the answer for you all the time, it's to check that you know how to do it by hand. So you put them in and hit zoom six. Here's one of them. And there's the other, so they do cross, correct? So right off the bat, what can we write down for consistent and inconsistent? Which one should I circle? Consistent, right. Circle consistent. And underneath that, where it says in, independent and dependent, that's for the answers. You know, how many answers did you get? Did you get an infinite number? No, it's the normal thing, right? Just an answer. So circle independent. So you circle consistent and independent. And then before we get ahead of ourselves, go ahead and draw a rough sketch of that on the graph right there. But well, let's do one thing. Maybe we should be smart and figure out the answer first. Second calc, intersect for this one. You're trying to find where they intersect. Again, if you only have two curves put in your y equals, you can just hit enter for the first curve and enter for the second curve. Guess, eh, guess kind of matters. Get as close as you can. So there's my answer, two, five. So for your solution, write x equals two and y equals five. But the main thing I'm checking for when I'm looking at a solving by graphing question is if you say the solution is 2, 5, and you draw your graph, where should it cross? 2, 5. So carefully draw this the best you can, but for crying out loud, at least make sure that they do cross at 2, 5. If you say the answer is 2, 5, and you show it crossing at negative 1, 8, well, you know, we got a problem right there. So that ain't going to fly. So draw the blue one to the best of your ability and the red one. The blue one has a slope of three and a y-intercept of negative one. And the other one has a slope of one and an intercept of three. And then you're all done. So you solve by graphing and, and we're good. That's that. Any other ones in this section you want to look at? Or you just want to move on to inequalities? What do you want? It's your review. 22. OK, let's do 22. Good pick. Yep, these always are pains in the butt, right? 
All right, so we're going to do 22 now as a group. And the key when you see one of these is not to freak out. It's just to be patient. It's just going to take a little bit of time. So step one, I'm going to write down the problem. X minus 2y plus z equals 0. Equation 2 says 3x plus 2z equals 1. And negative x plus 3y plus 4. Pfft. That's a typo, by the way. Look at that. What's it say in the last equation? Negative x plus 4y, 3y plus 4y? What do you think it's supposed to mean? 4z. Change it to 4z. Mental note to myself also. Go back and fix that for next year. Okay. So what do you got to do first? Uh, solve for something, correct? Okay, what do you feel like? X, Y, Z, what do you want? Z and number one. Okay, let's go solve for Z and number one. Equation one, solving for Z, moving the X and the 2Y to the other side, it'd now be a negative X and a plus 2Y. Check every little step as you go, is that right? Because you don't want to mess up in the beginning, do you? You mess up in the beginning, the whole, you're gonna do 10 minutes of work and you get the wrong thing out. So are we good? I think so, okay. Whole reason you're solving for something, just like any other substitution, I don't care if it's two equations, three equations, five equations, 20 equations, you solve for the thing and you plug in the other ones. So we're going to have to carefully substitute this into equations two and three. And here we go. Equation two is 3x plus two, and there's the z, but z is the entire quantity, negative x plus 2y. So make sure you use a lot of parentheses on this stuff. When you substitute it in, if it's got lots of stuff, put it in parentheses. All right, that's equation two. Got to put in equation three, too. So equation three was negative x plus 3y plus 4z. And z is this thing, negative x plus 2y. And that's still equal to three. OK, did I plug it in right? 3x, 2z, 1, check. Negative x, 3y, 4z equals 3. I copied it right. All the numbers are the same. We're good, right? I think we're good. All right, so we got down to two equations and two unknowns. Problem is, they're just gross. So let's just take a half a second and clean them up. Equation two has got x's and y's, right? So let's see how many x's I got. I see negative 2x from this distribution. Huh? So negative 2x plus 3x would just be x. So there's an x from this. Y's, you see any y's? I see some y's. I see four y's. See four y's right there? Yeah, 4y. So plus 4y. Any just numbers? No, there's not just any numbers. This is x's and this is x's and y's. Everything is, there's no other stuff to do. So it just still equals 1. So there's equation 2 cleaned up, and that's a lot better. Equation 3 is still gross. So let's clean this thing up also. I'll go in the same order, x's and y's. So I see negative 4x from this distribution. But I got another negative x in the front. And putting those together, that'd be negative 5x's. Y's from this distribution, 4 times 2, that's 8y. But I got 3y, so that's 11y. Any straight up numbers? No. If you distribute the 4, there'd be just 4x's and 8y's. There'd be no other numbers, so it still equals 3. So there we go. There's equations two and three all prettied up, and I think we're good. All right, now you look at it fresh, okay? It's like a brand new problem at this stage. Oh, Mr. Cheney just gives you this on a test. How would you solve this? It doesn't matter. There's two ways you could do it, substitution or elimination, right? What do you feel like, substitution or elimination? I would do elimination too. I'd probably multiply the top one through by five and then just get the X's gone, so that's what we're gonna do. Equation two, let's multiply through by five. So that would be 5x plus 20y equals 5. And then equation 3, we're not going to do a dang thing with that because it already had a 5. So the question is now, what should I do with these? Should I add them or subtract these equations in order for those 5x's to go away? The answer would be add them. Yep, you want 5x plus negative 5x. That is nothing. Okay, so that's gone. That's eliminated. That was the point. Y's, I got 20 Y's plus 11 Y's. That would be 31 Y's. Oh, Lord. And over on the right, 5 plus 3 is 8. And dividing by 31, oh, Lord, this is disgusting, but 
it is what it is. Y equals 831st. Ooh, you picked a good problem for me to model because this is going to be gross. All right, did we mess up anywhere? I just want to double check real quick because that is a gross answer. You should be a little suspicious, not much. I, I would give that to you, but I'm just going to double check real quick. That was negative 2X and 3X. That's X, right? That's 4Y, 4Y, check. Negative 5X, yeah. 8Y, 11Y, okay. I think we're okay. Add them together times by five. <sighs> Sucks. Okay, I think we're good, right? Let's go on. So Y is 831st. We need to go plug that back in somewhere and figure out what something else is. Now, just go back up your, lo your logic. Here was equations with x's and y's, right? So this would be a good place to plug it in. So let's plug it into right here to equation two. x plus 4y. So that's 4 times 8 31st, unfortunately. And that equals 1. So here we go. Fraction knowledge. It's always our weakness. This is a fraction, four over one. How do you multiply fractions straight across, right? So this is really just the same as x plus 32 31sts. And thinking ahead, what are you going to do with that 32 31st? You're going to move to the other side, right? You're going to do one minus it? So you're going to have to subtract fractions at some point. How about we just call one 31 31st while we're at it, get a common denominator, um, two steps in one. Because now what you're going to do is you're going to subtract the 32 31st over. So x is going to end up being whatever 31 31st minus 32 31st is. And you subtract the tops. 31 minus 32 is negative 1. And the bottom is still 31. So we got x equals negative 1 31st. All right. This is why you need to have a command of fractions, too. If you type in... 831st in your calculator is going to give you some gross decimal, and then you're going to try to plug it in. It's going to round and stuff like that, and then your answer is going to get more and more off. So you have to have fractions figured out at some point. Okay, X's and Y's are done. Now we just need Z. Uh, that's a good candidate, right? Z equals some stuff. So let's write it down. Z equals negative X. Well, X was negative 131st, right? So negative X, negative of this thing, would be positive. 131st, and then plus 2y. So plus 2 times y, which was 8 31st. Well, again, same kind of logic. How do you do 2 times 8 31st? You can think of the 2 as a fraction, multiply straight across. So z is going to be 131st plus 16 31st, or 17 31st. Woo, those are disgusting answers. If you do get something gross out, I highly encourage that you go check it. How do you check something like this? Remember, what, what's this supposed to do? It's supposed to make all these equations true, right? So pick one at random, plug in the numbers, and see if it works. And if it works for one of them, you can probably be pretty sure it works for the other. I will pick randomly equation three, okay? So let's check equation three. So type in negative x, hit the negative button on your home screen. You're not graphing. Negative x, x was? Negative 131st, so type negative negative 1 over 31. Check. Plus 3y, so plus 3 times y, y was 8 over 31. Plus 4 times z, and z was 17 over 31. I'm about to hit enter, and I'm going to pray my calculator says it equals 3. And it does. So, if it worked for that one and I did all my work right, I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty sure it'll work for the other two. If you got extra time on your test, what should you do? Go back and make sure your answers work for every single one. If they do, you're a thousand percent confident that you did the problem correctly and life is good. That was a good one to pick. That was rough. That was a rough one. Good one to pick. Study that one. If you can do that with the fractions, you can do anything. Very good. How about uh, something with inequalities? Anything uh, 27 through 32, anything like that? One more for today? Anything? Pick a number. 30. Okay, 30. All right, here we go. Last one for the day. Modeling how to solve a system of inequalities. All right, so 30 
Last one of the day, you got three inequalities. One of them says negative x minus y is less than zero. Last other one says y is less than eight. And this says x is less than or equal to six. So we're going to have to graph these things. Now, that's as good as it can be, x something, y something. This one is hard to graph because we don't have y by itself. So this one, I'm kind of checking, can you get y by itself? Equation one, guys, how would you get y by itself? What would you do? I would add x. Okay, so negative y still is less than x now. Still don't have y by itself. I got a negative y. Multiply by negative. What should I not forget to do? Yeah, flip the C, exactly. Very good, guys. Very good. So I'm multiplying by a negative. I got to flip that thing or else everything's going to be jacked up. I ain't going to fly. Well, that one's ready to go now. I got Y. I got Y. This doesn't even have a Y, so it's got X's, and we're about as good as we can do. Well, let's graph them. Here we go. All right. Let's see what we got. Y is somehow going up to 8, so I better go 8 high. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. X is seeming to have to move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's we'll see if that's good enough. Okay. So first one, Y has got to be more than negative X. What's a graph of negative X look like? Well, what's the intercept? I don't see any intercept you. Mm, so it's zero, right? So it's gonna cross the origin, sweet. What's the slope of this thing? Negative one, right. So it's gonna go down one every time I go over one. Down, over one, down one over one, down one, and you have a graph provided, so you should be hitting those tick marks pretty much exactly like it looks. They go up by twos, but same, you could go down two, over two, it's the same kind of thing. This one, what should I shade it as? Should I have a solid or a dashed line on this baby? That's a dash, very good. So let's draw a dashed line for this thing. Outstanding. Trust is coming alive on me, I love it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This one, where would you shade, above, correct? Okay, we'll come back to that though. Let's worry about the other guys. Y's gotta be less than eight. What's a graph of Y equals something look like? That's a horizontal, very good. Okay, so I just gotta find where Y is eight. One, two, three, oh, way up here. And this one, I'm going to draw a, another dashed line, right? Cause this one was also. And since these two seem to cross somewhere, you know, take the time, make sure they actually do cross somewhere up there, draw the lines. Another dashed line, what the hell? Last one, equation three, x equals number. X equals what kind of line is that? That's vertical. So I need to go find where x is six. That's right here, correct? I'm going to draw a vertical line up and down. Should it be dashed or solid? Solid this time. So just like that. I bet you can guess where the region is to shade. Can you guess? Probably that triangle, right? But let's not, let's not assume anything. Okay, it's got to be above the negative x graph. Here's the negative x graph, so above it, correct? It has to be to below the y equals 8 graph, so down here, right? And it has to be to the left. x is less than 6, so over here. So is it that triangle? Yeah, it's the triangle. So that is your answer. As long as you got solid lines, dash lines in the right spot, and your region filled in, you are good to go. I think you guys will be okay. You guys think you'll be okay? Sometimes I get teased and I feel like it's going to go well, and then you, then I get my heart broken. But I think we're going to be okay. So, good work, everybody. Um, go ahead and work on it. I think your goal for tonight should probably be try to get through like 32 or something like that. You know, if you can do that, that's a big goal though. If you can't quite get there, don't don't sweat it. But um, keep on task. Try to get through those kind of problems tonight. Come with questions tomorrow. Do you have any questions over any of the first 15 that you did yesterday? All right, well, try to get as much done as you can tonight. Come with questions tomorrow. Tomorrow's our last day together before the test, so I want you to ask lots of questions, and you know, I don't know how to do this one or whatever. And that's all. Very good work, everybody. Oh. Yeah, we're such a fan group. Yeah, yeah that, that's what it is. Okay. We didn't this anymore. How do you do it with two? Oh, man. The eternal struggle I have. Would you give me a pen? Give me one of mine because I'm going to need it all day. Thank you. Yeah, they've all been chewed on. Yeah, I'm a pen chewer. I don't give a crap. It's just like pre-calc or anything else like that. As soon as you change the letter, they think the rules are different. What if I didn't have the absolute value there? What would you do? 
Because two somethings minus one something is one something, right? Yeah. Well, same thing here. If I have two absolute values plus three, you can you can subtract an absolute value. It's a thing, you know. You can do it like anything else. So two things minus one thing is one thing, right? There's your setup. So I'm just I'm just checking that right there. Yeah. Do you know that you can do that? You did not, yeah. but now you do. What is your derivative? Uh, like, what, what did I get? Yeah, what did you get for the derivative, for the velocity equation? 